personal. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is the official Anthony Joshua versus Robert Hellenius post fight review, and your result of the fight is an Anthony Joshua uh, seventh round stoppage. Now, I was only one round up. I thought he would get him out of there in the eighth round. Mm -hmm. He got him in the seventh, so I wasn't dead accurate like Crawford Spence, but I wasn't too far off either. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Good, you know, it wasn't the most entertaining fight till the end. He punctuated it in the end with a beautiful one punch knockout. But before I get my thoughts, I'll swing it over to Pops. You know, Pops, Joshua had to fight a good a veteran half hider and Hellenius and on seven days' notice. Um, what did you make of the whole performance? Second fight with Derek James. What did you make? make what, what did you make of it all? I, I still think. Uh, I mean, I, I like what I've seen from Joshua. I did question him throughout the fight because I, I, to me, I still feel that, that he does too much thinking, and, and maybe because, like you said, uh, Derek James uh, training him and everything. Everything's changing. He's trying to make him a more uh, technical, foundational fighter than more than just a knockout artist, and that's probably why he did this fight. Um, <clears throat> I, I feel like he's still lacking some confidence, even with that strong knockout against a fighter like Hellenius. And shout out to Hellenius because if it wasn't for him, this fight wouldn't have been made. And respect to him, he still came out healthy and everything's okay. But for Joshua, to me, it, it, it was just a confident builder for him. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, uh, I remember last time when, he, when, when Joshua fought Jermaine and Franklin, a lot of people complained about the fact that he was boxing too much. And I, I liked how he boxed in that fight. I thought I, I was, I, was a, I liked how he boxed. I thought it was a good, a good, a good performance, right? But people didn't like that. They wanted the old, destructive AJ, right? Well, now you, now you really shouldn't be complaining because for the, for, the, for the Anthony Joshua isn't getting knockouts crowd, well, he, he just delivered a one-punch mm -hmm. knockout of the year candidate type of, 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 of performance. So that's a, that's a great thing. And I also think, like, look, he it wasn't his most exciting performance. Like, this wasn't Povetkin. This wasn't the Kuchko fight. That's a different guy. That's a different era. He's an older heavyweight now. And I think this part of his career, this phase of his career, and the matchup that everyone's talking about with Deontay Wilder, all those things require him to be a more mature heavyweight. And I think that's what we saw. He had the right guy in front of him to, to, to be a mature heavyweight, all, all granted. But he executed... Um, I thought he did a great job of setting up the right hand up top, and it wasn't just something that ha magically happened in the seventh round. He was doing it the whole fight, jabbing into the body, stabbing into the body, uh, mixing in the left hook. Um, and what, one thing you're seeing with Joshua is he's becoming a fighter that throws more straighter punches. There's the, there's a le uh, a lower percentage of his punches that are wide punches or uppercuts. He's becoming more of a textbook mechanical fundamentally sound fighter and that's part of the Derek James system you know they're building that foundational base and you know you work off the base huh and you work off the base and then you and work off the base throughout the fight one thing that I noticed with Derek James was telling him is set up your angles walk off your angles and then move mm -hmm. right and you swing from that mm -hmm. so 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 as far as him and Deontay Wilder because that's the fight that's been rumored that's why they're saying he had to pick a safe opponent because he didn't want to lose for Wilder right um, listen, that fight's been going for a lot of years, and back back all those years ago, I always favored Anthony Joshua over Wilder. Even even way back when when they, when they were both undefeated, I was I was always bigger on Joshua, right? But then Joshua's taking some knockout losses, and you know he's probably one of the most he's I would actually say he's the he's the most scrutinized fighter in boxing, more than anybody, more than Ryan Garcia, more than Tank. Every because when when he does great, like when when he, when, when he has a classic fight, Klitschko, they say, oh, well, he had a classic fight with an old guy. When when he gets a, <laughs> when he boxes well against Jermaine and Franklin, they say, oh, well, wait, the killer wait. instinct is gone, yeah, and he's no good. And now I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people saying, well, he went seven rounds with with, with, with Helen Diaz, while they went like one minute of the first round with Helen Diaz. So there there were still even people that are not satisfied. But I do I do think they are building. This was an improvement. And as far as him and Wilder, look, that's a it's still a great fight. It's still one of the best fights that could be made in boxing. We know Deontay Wilder's matured himself. We know Malik Scott's got him boxing a bit more now. And he's, a, he's an athletic freak. So I think if they're going to fight for AJ from his side of things, he's going to need to really get through them early rounds. Because I think Wilder's going to come out looking to put his lights out. And uh, if AJ is able to weather that storm and get the fight to the middle rounds and the back half of the fight, I think the base, that foundational base that Derek James is teaching him and the way he's learning how to set up certain shots, the right hand and the left hook and these straight punches. I, I still do think, and maybe I'll be one of the only people who says this, but I, but I still do think Anthony Joshua has more than enough left in the tank to defeat a Deontay Wilder. And I know, I know that's not popular. And I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a contrarian or anything like that. 
I just think that uh, the way you see it. he's still a he's he's still he's still a top five heavyweight. He's still someone that you know you're not gonna just be a nobody and beat him. But yeah. but uh, it's a great fight. And I would just want to talk about well, I mean about uh, Joshua, uh, the maturity level, and uh, we, we we as fans we don't realize the pressure that guy has every day. Um, carrying that when he was champion, he was very overconfident. He was never to be anybody, and he would come into the fights like very confident, didn't care about nothing. But when he got humble, got the humble pie, he's he become a different fighter, a more mature fighter, and a more philosophical fighter. Where he he actually says, you know what, I'm gonna enjoy the sport, but really fuck all you guys, fuck all the fans, fuck all you everybody because you know why? At the end of the day, I can't win or lose. So I like how he kind of everything. You, you were too. kind of alluding to that because while we were alive. Yeah. Uh, and, like, and like the middle rounds, the 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 the, the fans were booing him because yeah, you know, it was my action, saying, and, like, and you were kind of like taken aback by that. Yeah, I was really upset because here's a guy like he said, I have my back. I carry the heavyweight uh, division here. Carry, but his boxing on his back. My back, and it's been hurting me. And it's still hurting me. And even I went in this right here it was a relief. Yeah, I beat this guy, got a knockout, and we got a relief for this. But I still have that that pressure back here, and it's true. So he can never win. He's always gonna, like Brendan says, he's always gonna be screwed. Where it was called. The screwed. only way he's gonna get the credit he deserves really is if that fight gets made with Wilder and he finds a way to win. That's the one guy where so? if he does fight him, that's the one guy. I mean, Fury of course too, but Fury's fighting MMA fighters. Yeah. But if he fights Wilder and he's able to get along, it don't matter how it comes. It don't matter if it comes by decision or knockout. If he just finds a way to beat Wilder, that's the fight that's gonna make him go um, top. He's he's gonna be appreciated a lot more. Yeah. Um, in the sport and um yeah but overall look respect to Hellenius I got a lot of respect for Hellenius Hellenius has fought everybody he's fought you know Wilder Joshua Dillian White uh Gerald Washington you name and it. a whole host of other guys um so respect to him because he didn't have to take this on short notice but he did and I'm sure he got a nice payday and look he he he, he still showed he can he can box he got a nice jab he was able to and that's that's what the concern is right if you are trying to nitpick that's what the concern is Hellenius is a uh a, um an older heavyweight, yeah, and he was able to lump up Anthony Joshua with the jab, and we know that Deontay Wilder's jab under the guidance of Malik Scott, where he's boxing a lot more, is um, really maturing as well. So maybe that winds up being a problem as well. But you know what? I, I feel like Wilder was scrutinized by a lot of people when he was champion. So was Joshua. They both have taken devastating knockout losses and big fights. They both are maturing. I feel like the fight's still a great fight. And I think both of them have a chance, to, uh, as much as the other, to win the fight. So I hope, I hope, um, I hope it gets made next. Listen, I hope it gets made next. I don't want to hear, oh, we, 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 we couldn't get the fight done. No, 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 no. Make the damn yeah. fight or just shut yeah. the fuck up and, about and, and, it. And Fu Fu That's where I'm at. Fuka thought um, Wilder's already fought Fury, mm -hmm. and Fury dominated um, Wilder. So there's not much more that Wilder can do but to beat Anthony Joshua. But the Anthony Joshua beating Wilder and beating Fury. What would that put him up on in language fight? I mean, that, that, that put him a lot. I, I don't think he beat Fury, but... but I'm just saying, like... You know, I, I just think if he get the Wilder fight, if he could beat Wilder, just that alone, that's going to change a lot of people's perception of him. Yeah. So, uh, look, and, and, and you know, shout out to Derek James. I'm sure for Derek James, I mean, I know um, he's a proud man and a great trainer. He's been under a lot of scrutiny since Earl Spence got destroyed by Terrence Carver. A lot of people are throwing... A lot of people are, are in the media... And on YouTube, I've heard throwing Derek James on name under the bus and say that he's not a, uh, an overrated trainer. This down the third, I I didn't do that. I I still think Derek James is one of the best in the business. You interviewed him. I've interviewed him. I met him. I know what he's I'm like. He's a great. He's a, he's a great boxing person, yeah. right? And he and, he, and he's one of the treasures of the sport. I don't really say that about many people in boxing, but he's a treasure of this sport when it comes to just boxing people. He's a great trainer. I think I think um, it's good for him as well to get a win in, in this regard because he was under a lot of scrutiny. Yeah. This was his first fight since the Spence fight with uh, Crawford. And over here, over here, over there in uh, the UK, I mean, uh, he, he did leaps, leaps and bounds. And um, I just, people that just jumped the gun and, and hating on the guy because, you know, we're all humans are going to lose some fights and we learn from that. And what better way he had is, is he had Spencer he lost to and now he came and rebounded with a win with another great champion in British boxing, in my opinion, in Joshua. So uh, you got to put respect to him no matter how you look at it. I mean, you can't just judge him for one fight. I'm sorry. No, and that doesn't that, 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 that take away from all the great work he's done. And I'll tell you this, man. Uh, I think he's. I think I still think he's the guy for the job. He he's good enough of it as a coach, and I think Anthony Joshua is a willing enough of a learner and a hard worker. To to to, to they, they can get over the hump against Wilder. Don't don't write him off. He's not he's not done just yet. But um, mm -hmm. on that note. I'm gonna leave it at that. You guys let me know what you think about Anthony Joshua's performance. I'm sure a lot of you disagree with some of the things we're saying, but uh, yes, whether you agree or disagree, feel free, to, feel free to feel free to leave your thoughts down below. Yeah. 
and I definitely definitely keep supporting the channel. And like I say in every single one of these videos, y'all can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hatanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.